Hey everyone, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and today I'm doing the second part of a series on creating glitch ensembles in Reactor. So for part one I created this macro which can give us a wide variety of glitch sounds. And today I'll show how we can use this macro to create a larger ensemble um, that is very open-ended and can give the user uh, access to many different styles of effects with the press of a button. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a macro that can be used to supply our glitch macro with all of the necessary values. So we're going to have four outputs for speed, delay, feedback, and the last one will be feedback type. And what we're going to do is use a series of selector modules to send uh, one of 16 values to these outputs. So we can wire all the outputs from this macro into the inputs of our glitch macro. And then let's make our selectors, give them 16 inputs. And this whole ensemble is going to be mono. So I generally will just set each new element to mono as I go, but a much easier way is actually to go into the instrument properties and just set the number of voices to one. Um, for some reason I never do that, but it's definitely a better way to go about it. Okay, so now all we need to do is supply the inputs of these modules with some values that will create glitch effects. So I'm going to create another macro for our first effect, and I'm just going to create some really simple effects to illustrate the point today, but you can get a lot more in depth than I'm going to. So I'm just going to make a reverse knob that has a value from 0 to negative 1, and that'll just control the speed. And then this is just going to be a really simple effect. Like I said, we're not even going to bother to attach the other uh, outputs to anything. They're just all going to be equal to zero. <clears throat> and we can run these values into our selector. And then I'll just duplicate that and we'll make another simple one that instead of playing reverse speed, plays regular speed, but can or um, forward speed but can slow it down or speed it up so we'll just name that speed and give it a knob from 0 to 1 so basically I'm just going to create a bunch of really simple effects here uh, to give you the idea of how this all works and hopefully you can get creative on your own and come up with some new effects through trial and error which is really how I found a lot of this stuff on my own anyway. So for a third effect, let's make a something a little more complicated. We're going to control the speed with an envelope. And this is just going to kind of be a really simple scratch. So it'll slow the speed down and then it'll speed it back up again. So um, we're going to have a envelope with an amplitude of 1, so we can supply the A input with 1, and we're going to trigger it on a new gate, so we can add that as well. And then finally, we're going to want to take the final value, which is going to start at 0 and go up to 1, and then go back down to 0, and we're going to subtract it from 1, so instead, the speed will start at 1, and then it'll drop down to 0, and then it'll go back up to 1 again. So it's just a simple way to get a pretty cool little scratch effect. So the only real downfall of this method that I'm showcasing right now is that this envelope, for example, will always be on regardless of whether we're using it or not. 
So the nice thing to do would be to rewrite all of this stuff in core, and instead of using the selector modules, just use uh, routers in core to decide which values are being used. Um, but that's just a little more than I can accomplish in a 10 minute tutorial, so we're just going to take the easy way out for now. And so let's create a mechanism to trigger which of these effects is on at any point in time. So I'm just going to take the incoming note pitch, I'm going to subtract it from 48, or subtract 48 from it, and then I'm just going to run that into the position of all of our selector modules. And so this means you can trigger the first effect by hitting MIDI note 48, also known as C2. Um, and then you can trigger the next one by hitting 49, etc. And this works pretty well. The only problem with it is that uh, if you press a note lower than 48, you still get the effect from 48. If you press an effect a uh, note that's too high, you just get the highest effect triggered. But that's pretty easy to get rid of, but it's also just not the focus of this tutorial, so I'm not going to bother with it. Okay, so I rearranged the panel off screen so you didn't have to watch me. Let's take a quick listen. Alright, so let's create a somewhat more experimental effect. This is just something I was playing around with earlier today. And just to give you the idea of how easy it is to just throw random signals at something like this and get pretty cool sounds, I'm going to use a sawtooth to control the speed, and we'll just give it a knob for the pitch and an amplitude of 1. And let's make sure to connect this to the appropriate selectors. And we need to make it mono as well. It's kind of an annoying feature that even when you have a mono macro, new elements are still added in poly. But nothing to do about that. Okay, let's take a listen. Alright, so that's not a very exciting effect, but it does kind of sound cool when you turn the pitch knob while you have it on. So what I'm going to do is supply us with a automated changing of the pitch. So let's create a new envelope. I'm just going to create a simple AR envelope with an attack time 80 and no release. And I'm going to trigger it with a new gate. And I'm going to use a compare module to make sure that the new gate is always at its maximum value. And we're going to multiply that by 120. So when this value arrives at the G input of our envelope, it's going to tell us that our envelope has a maximum value of 120. So we're going to jump from a pitch of 0 to a pitch of 120 with our sawtooth. However, we need to use an A to E module to translate from our audio signal to the event signal that the pitch wants. Again, we can set it all to mono, and let's take another... Let's take another listen.
Okay, so the key here is just to kind of be as creative as you can and to not be afraid to experiment with uh, the structure because it really can spit out some pretty awesome glitch effects. All right, so this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. I hope you guys like this tutorial. If you do, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website for written tutorials. Thanks a lot. Have a good week.